I wanted to talk about this guy, uh, the Pen Star, which I hope on its way soon. They've reached out and said they're interested to send one for review. It's an interesting one. What they've done here is they've actually got rid of two layers, look. They've got a display layer. So what this Pen Star has, it doesn't allow touching with the finger. It only allows selecting things with a pen with the, the stylus and they've all and so they've taken that out the touch layer so that that means that it can be a thinner screen and the ink is closer to the top which is cool they've taken out the front lit layer paper doesn't need front light you know a lot of people think we don't need front lights so therefore we can have the screen to ink distance even less still and okay i can see that as well what they've had to leave in of course is the stylus layer okay so the actual digitizer for the stylus and instant interestingly they are using a different standard of stylus than Wacom EMR and it says 8,000 pressure levels. Now 8,000 pressure levels is actually more than the Wacom EMR does, it does 4,000. So 8,000 layers of pressure they've taken out to get their tablet thin and light and get their screen to ink distance nice and low to make it more like paper. They've taken out the touch layer. Now remarkable in this tablet right here, they've taken out the EMR layer. Interesting. Now they've taken out the EMR layer, meaning that they can use instead, they can use this, which is the USI 2.0 standard, which is not a bad standard, nothing wrong with that, but it is not, for me, as accurate as the EMR pen is. It's not as pleasurable to use as well. I think maybe Remarkable have gone for the wrong choice because would I be happy to use a Remarkable just with a pen? Yes, probably would really, especially if I've got a type folio so I can use my fingers as they go well on a, on a keyboard. Actually have Remarkable taken the wrong layer out. Let me know what you think about that. You know, is, Should they actually have gone for using the Wacom EMR and not bothering with the touch? Because the USI 2.0, this stands for Universal Stylus Initiative. So it's a very easy way for companies to allow a good quality digital stylus to work with their devices, universal stylus initiative. You can put this on just about any tablet that has a capacitive digitizer. And so a capacitive digitizer means that you can press, you must have to have something that gives you pressure levels, but I think a lot of them do have that anyway. It's universal because it can work with the digitizer, which is already a layer already on the screen. That I think is how Remarkable have managed to get their screen to ink distance so low whilst adding in that front light layer. So this is actually closer to the top of this, of the, the ink is closer to the top of the screen, closer than the Remarkable 2 was, and that didn't have a front light. So yeah, granted, this is not a very impressive front light in this. And also the pen star has these buttons on the sides. So I think that could be an interesting one. What do you think about that? The lighting choice put me off books now too, was always adjusting lighting, interesting. You mean the, the fact that they've taken away the front lit layer? Yeah, that's an interesting one. You don't complain at paper not having a light. <laughs> the pen only thing would give me serious lost pen anxiety. I like that point. I hadn't thought about it that way actually. Julie, yeah, what happens if you lose the pen? And because it's not whack on EMR, you don't necessarily know what the stylus standard is that you're going for. So you'd want to know that. And what can you do with the tablet? If, you, if you've just got access to those, it's got nine side buttons, which is the, the amount of side buttons you normally get on drawing tablets. So, okay, but uh, you know, if you can't select anything. Supernote for me is the very best for this. When I write on a Supernote, I think, wow, I'm actually making ink on, on a screen. I know I'm not, but it does feel like that. More pressure levels should mean better writing feel and a better actual accuracy. It should render your handwriting nicer, which should be good. Very old Onyx with pen only is so, not so bad for Remarkable, in my opinion, as writing is the main use case. I agree. So yeah, for something that's trying to do Android things, finger touch makes more sense, doesn't it? And the pen is the kind of secondary edition and therefore going with the USI is fine. Whereas I think for Remarkable, they really wanted their pen experience to be just the best. And I think they've gone for the USI because it can be super fast. It is super fast. <laughs> I love this. Unfortunately, I think I contribute to this problem here, don't I, a little bit. There is a lot of choice. You know, enjoy looking at these and know that if you select any of these 10 or, or even the ones that I've just knocked off the top there, you're still going to get a great experience. Yeah, touch is important for a mainstream device. Yeah, it would seem odd, wouldn't it? You're right about this, I think. The pen star will probably stay quite niche for some time. Who knows though? Let's do a top 10, but for a specific use case. I like that idea. 
yeah, top 10 for writers, top 10 for this, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. I'll just come back every week and we'll just chat away. <laughs> a pen style looks like a device that deserves more coverage, but we're sponsored for displaying features only or through input. That's a really interesting point, you know, companies do need to get their message out somehow. And if it's by sponsoring people to get people to actually bother with their company, which is a new company, a uh, new tablet at least, um, then maybe that's the way to do it. Cool, like style. Tried using a Windows tablet with Wacom and OneNote, but the pen lag and offset is killing me. The palm rejection is what really made me go back to pen and paper. Now, one thing about this pen star is of course, there is no touch layer. So there, there's no need for palm rejection because the only thing that's gonna be making contact and, and inputting the screen is the pen. Interesting, right? So if you've had a problem with palm rejection, maybe that's a good idea. Yeah. Interesting me about the muscle memory about touch devices. For me, I wonder about those buttons. I, I love a tactile button that's done well. So if those buttons are, are done well, that could be good. Palm Pilot flashbacks in a good way. Pen only for a dedicated notebook. Yeah, I quite like that.